Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, welcome to my channel if you are new here today. We are doing a brand overview of NARS. I have picked up a pretty much a full face, I think the only thing I don't have is like brows and eyeliners. Uh, a full face of NARS Cosmetics, I've been testing it for months and I finally have my thoughts on all of the products that I own and I wanted to give you guys my thoughts, opinions, and recommendations from the brand. Hopefully that sounds interesting to you guys. If it does, let's go ahead and do the YouTube-y things. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And let's get started. If you haven't caught one of my kind of brand overviews, brand reviews, full face, kind of, I don't know what they're called, so that gist. If you haven't caught one of them before, I'll, I'll link the, I think I have maybe one or two already on my channel. I'll link them down below for you guys if you if you wanted to see them. But um, basically what it is is like a, a combination of me talking to you like this with uh, B-roll over the top of like the product swatches and like me applying the product. I try and keep it as concise as possible. There will be timestamps and everything in case you're only interested in certain products. Everything will be linked in the description box down below for you guys. They are affiliate links if you shop through them. So thank you so much if you do. And let's get into it. We're going to go uh, like in order of application. So like primer up. Out of the primers, the only one that I've actually picked up so far is the NARS Instant Line and Pore Perfector, which is the kind of little stick. This particular product really intrigued me because one, it had like the, well, one, I'm always looking to minimize my pores, okay? I wanna be poreless and flawless, I just do. Two, I really liked in the description of this, it said that it would kind of like stop makeup from or like smooth out fine lines, which I have this like one really stubborn smile line here and you know, some forehead lines that kind of a jazz. And so the description of it really, really intrigued me. And I actually quite like this little pore stick. I really like the actual effectiveness of this product. It really does actually smooth out my pores. I Does it erase fine lines? No, it's not going to, it, it doesn't. But it does stop my makeup from settling so heavily into my fine lines, which is nice. Just the actual pore smoothing effect of this particular little stick primer, I really, really like. I also just like how quick and easy it is with the stick. I have wanted to pick up another one of their primers. I know their, I think it's like their soft, soft pore, pore perfector or the soft matte primer. I know that has really high reviews, but a lot of their primers seem to have SPF or ingredients in it that is going to 100% break me out. I seem to be quite sensitive to a lot of SPFs. Listen, I am a sensitive Sally with my skin around here, so <laughs> I have to be careful. So that's why I didn't pick up any of their other primers, um, but I am pleasantly surprised with that one. For foundation, I picked up three. So the ones that we're going to cover today is the NARS Sheer Glow, the NARS Light Reflecting, and the NARS, this one is the Long... Well, natural radiant longwear foundation and I will touch on the soft matte foundation as well so let's do that one first I don't actually have the soft matte foundation in my collection I did pick up a couple of testers of it and have tested it out I didn't pick it up because I was had a feeling that it wasn't going to be my kind of a vibe of a foundation I think two years ago it absolutely would have been so for reference I have incredibly sensitive you'll hear it a lot in this video uh, but also combination skin but I would say my skin is more verging on like normal at the moment and as I'm getting older so it's not as oily as like say two years ago, I would have said I had combo to oily skin, but it's definitely like going in the other direction lately. And so the times that I tried the soft matte foundation this year, it wasn't that it was a bad foundation necessarily. It was just that for me, it was way too matte and like drying on my skin, even when I really hydrated my skin. So I just knew I wouldn't get a lot of use out of it to pick it up. I would say though, if you do have that combo oily skin, I do think it's probably a foundation you would probably quite like because it had a really good coverage level. It was quite lightweight on the skin. It didn't feel heavy or anything like that. And it really was a matte finish. So the wear time on it was really, really good, but it just wasn't for like me personally. My all time favorite, you guys have heard me rave about this foundation constantly, like constantly. It is is 
my top in my top two foundations if not one of my like top foundations in my collection i wore it on my wedding day i love it so much i have my summer shade and my winter shade like it is pure perfection to me and it is the nars light reflecting foundation so my kind of everyday normal shade is mont blanc and then if for some reason i get out in the sun and get a little bit of a tan I am uh, DeVille. I will say my default kind of shade for NARS foundations is Mont Blanc though. Just the undertone. It might be in other foundations. I noticed the light reflecting runs slightly deeper in the shade range than the other foundations for like the exact same shade. You'll see that in the application. But I would say that the undertone of Mont Blanc is perfect for me. So even if the foundation is just a shade too light for me, I still prefer Mont Blanc because of the undertone and I can just like use bronzer in that to make it the right kind of a shade. In the application, I did one side of my face with the light reflecting foundation. I will link other videos down below for you guys as well that where I've used the light reflecting foundation if you're interested. I just love it. I just think it is one of the most natural, ever, like best everyday, lightweight, just your skin but better kind of foundations it has like a medium coverage you can get it to be a solid medium it's not going to be like a full full coverage if you build it up to, to like a full coverage it's going to maybe get a little bit heavy and cakey on the skin it is just a great your skin but perfected foundation it's lightweight it's long wearing it covers what it covers what it needs to it's smoothing it doesn't settle in fine lines and it's just i don't know it is just actually one of the best foundations hands down i have ever tried and i love it like i will constantly re be repurchasing it the nars natural radiant long wear foundation i cannot get this to work for me and i know when this initially got released people went nuts over it like it was like everyone's favorite foundation and i know a lot of people do quite like this foundation i just cannot get it to work for me it's like where the um light reflecting foundation like melts and into my skin and becomes one with my skin the radiant foundation for me just like sits on top of my skin it doesn't just like merge nicely with it and it just makes my skin look a little bit too dry looking and it just looks heavy and cakey on my skin it is a full coverage foundation so if you are looking for that then you know it might work really well for you i also find the the title i think a little bit like off like just confusing because it is it says natural radiant which would make me think that's the finish of it but it really i find it to be at least on my skin like a more, more matte finish like natural matte finish um and as i mentioned full coverage it's just too heavy and cakey and like it just doesn't look natural on my skin and i know it's a lot of people's favorite but i just i've really tried hard i just can't get it to work for me and every time i use it i have like a bad makeup day or at least a bad skin makeup day and then lastly i tried the nars sheer glow and i know this has been a lot of people's holy grail for a very long time and honestly rightly so I really love the sheer glow so I put that on the other side of my face you'll see that in the application and it's just a beautiful foundation it has more coverage to it than the light reflecting foundation you can build it up a little bit more but honestly I don't see too much of a difference between the sheer glow and the light reflecting even on my face like once I've powdered you honestly cannot tell the difference between the two I would say that the light reflecting foundation is more hydrating on your skin and has a little bit more of a hydrating finish. I don't want to say necessarily a glowy finish because it doesn't necessarily have that. It's more of a hydrated finish than the sheer glow. I would say the sheer glow is more of that natural finish, but it's still, it's just still such a beautiful foundation. It's very lightweight. I don't like to build it up too much. If you do build it up a little bit too much, it does have a tendency to get a little bit cakey, but in terms of the actual finish, it's lightweight, it's long wearing, it doesn't settle in fine lines, it's smoothing, it has the coverage, and I really adore it. Like, I can see myself consistently repurchasing the Light Reflecting Foundation and the Sheer Glow Foundation. I think if you have combo to oily skin, you you might like the Sheer Glow more than you might like the Light Reflecting because the Light Reflecting does have a lot more hydration and like skincare benefits to it. I will say though, my holy grail out of all of the NARS foundations that I've tried is the Light Reflecting. If I have to get rid of everything and just keep the Light Reflecting, I'm, I'm happy to do so. It is hands down my favorite. Next on my list that I do want to try as a side note is the Tint of Moisturizer because I saw Simply Blair tried that and she loved it and I have been eyeing that. That off so I think I'll pick that up shortly too.
Next up, we have concealer. Now, NARS does have color correctors, and I did have the light color corrector back in the day, but it was just way too deep of an undertone for me, or not like an undertone, it was too deep of a shade for me. It was just like really, really orange. So I think if you have like a deeper skin tone than me, like medium up, then the light shade and everything was gonna work really well for you. Um, it just didn't work for me. But the actual formula of the NARS color corrector, I really liked, I enjoyed it. And had there been a shade for me, I would have kept it for sure. Let's talk about the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I know that this is so many people's favorite holy grail, like ultimate concealer. So many of you love it and I can't get it. I don't get it, I don't get the hype. I actually decluttered this at the start of the year, um, but I ended up keeping it because I was like, oh, I'm going to film a full face. Like, why not use it? Now, this shade is the shade Madeline, and it's way too dark for me. And I find this with a lot of NARS concealers. A lot of NARS concealers. I think they only have two. But, you know, I have a lot of trouble with NARS concealers in their shade range. It's either way too light for me or way too dark for me. And anyway, on a, I think I got this one online, Madeline. I just assumed it would work, and it didn't. So it's way too dark for me. You'll see that in the application, but just in for the sake of the finish. I just really don't like it. I can't get behind this. It makes my under eyes look super old. It, it's like, I don't see the creamy radiance-ness to it. I kind of find it a bit drying. I find it really texturizing. I find it settles in fine lines. I don't feel like it has the coverage and I can't build it up because it gets too heavy on my under eyes. And yeah, I just, I wanna be the girl that loves this concealer because so many people love it, but I just, I cannot find a way to make it work for me regardless of the shade. Then we have the NARS Soft Matte Concealers. I have two shades, one in vanilla and one in creme brulee. Uh, and I sometimes I have to mix them together to be like the perfect shade. Sometimes I don't, you know, it just depends on the foundation. So that's why I like to have both. These are awesome. So many people rave about the Soft Matte Concealers from NARS and rightly so it is a brilliant concealer it's kind of one of those concealers to have in your like arsenal of makeup and it's kind of like a coverall brilliant for spot concealing if you're looking for like that perfect spot concealer this is the hands down the best spot concealer i have but also even on the under eyes it's actually really quite a nice under eye concealer which i have dry under eyes so considering that it is like a soft matte finish and still looks really nice on the under eyes is saying something um and it's just a solid concealer now it is a soft matte right so if you are someone that does want that like hydrating like creamy finish on the under eyes in particular then it's not a concealer you want to pick up for the under eyes but if you know maybe it's a spot concealer for you but I actually quite like it as an under eye concealer and a spot concealer I just think it's one of the best concealers on the market truly I really do I went a little powder crazy with NARS. I actually started with this one. This is the Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder, the pressed one, and I just got a little mini size of it. And I picked this one up because I saw someone raving about this and I can't remember who it was. It was probably Andrea Ali or something. Anyway, I picked this up to give it a go and I actually really like this. I set this eye on this side with this press powder. I really do like this. I think it's a beautiful powder. If you're someone that just wants like a real soft kiss of lightweight translucent powder, then this is a really good one for you. It's quite smoothing and lovely on the skin. Not super hydrating, but not super drying. But I guess I can already feel like the comparisons, maybe all the questions around comparisons to say like the Pat McGrath Labs under eye blurring powder or like the Laura Mercier secret blurring powder, that kind of a thing. And it's not really like either of those. It's a little bit different. This has more of like a, a sparkle to it, but not in a bad way in any way, shape or form. And on the under eye or on the face, you can't tell at all. But because of that, it just is a bit softer and less matte and drying on the skin. I do think that this powder is really lovely. And if you're someone that just wants like that kiss of just a really soft set of powder, I think that that's a really good option for you. I personally prefer it in the loose setting powder form. So this is the light reflecting powder in translucent crystal in the loose form. And I prefer it like this. I just find it works a little bit better for me. I feel like I don't get a lot of product on my brush when I use this one but I can get a bit more product I kind of get a bit like I like a little bit of powder you know what I mean I'm not st I'm not like stingy on the powder application and so for me this one works really well but I will say like this has a net in it in the packaging and like normally I don't love like the net packaging I actually ripped like my net out of the <laughs> house labs one of these but for this powder it is so fine 
it is so fine. I've never come across a powder as fine as this one that the net works really well and you really don't need a lot of powder on your brush or anything to kind of set your face. And I just like to get like kind of a fluffier powder brush and just like tap it in and then dust it all over my face. And surprisingly, it really sets the face for a long period of time especially with like a little amount of powder so again if you're someone that likes a small amount of powder but really wants to set your face you'll probably really like this or if you want to strate be able to strategically you know have a light dusting of powder this is a good one and it just leaves the skin like ever so softly like it's it doesn't make the skin too matte if that makes sense like you know the Laura Mercier translucent powder kind of thing that's going to set it and kind of make it quite matte whereas this has just an ever so soft naturalness to it lastly I picked up the soft matte advanced perfecting powder in the shade cliff this one is like way too light for me I can only use it strategically on my under eyes here but the next shade up is like too dark for me so again it's like that awkward kind of like NARS shade range for me this powder is nice I don't love it a whole lot like I much prefer the loose powder from the light reflecting than this one it is nice and I think if you have really really oily skin or really really oily under eyes you'll probably really quite like it but for me it's just a little bit too drying just also find it like cakes up a little bit underneath my eyes and I have used this on my whole face before but it's just a little bit it's not as smoothing and like melting into the skin in a nice way as what the light reflecting is so yeah this one isn't necessarily a bad powder it just doesn't like make me wowed at all like I don't really want to use it let's talk about some cream products you know if you have been around my channel before how much I intensely love the cream bronzer from NARS this is one of my all-time favorite cream bronzers it's one of my favorite products in my collection randomly I love this I think that this is just the best cream bronzer I have ever used I still am not quite sure why no actually I am it blends itself like it just blends itself out on your face it is so soft and blurring on the skin it's a really really good shade for me which could be a lot of the battle or, or a lot of the reason why I love it but it's just everything about this it's just easy to use it's a great shade it's long wearing it's diffusing and blurring on the skin and it just looks amazing and I love it if I had to give up my entire cream bronzer collection and just keep this one I wouldn't a heartbeat because honestly this is like I have not one bad word to say about this is absolutely incredible Cream blushes. This is the NARS Liquid Cream Blush. I have mine in the shade Behave. And this is the first one of these I tried. I actually never intended on trying this particular product, but I did because it obviously went viral on TikTok last year and it came in a Christmas set and I was like YOLO. And I fell head over heels in love with this formula. I get the hype. It's one of those true viral products that is actually worth every single bit of hype it gets. It is amazing. It is the most flawless natural seamless beautiful formula on your skin I adore it I like to put my cream blush over powder and it works impeccably over powder and it just honestly looks like a flush from within like you're not even wearing makeup at all it's super long wearing I love the shades that they have in this I absolutely want to pick up more I'm just trying to be you know conservative in my makeup collection because I have so much but this is like one of my top if not in my top two like favorite blush formulas of all time like cream blush formulas it's just impeccable i also picked up the uh, nars air matte blush this is the shade freedom and i actually quite like this too my only complaint about this is the packaging i don't like how small this little pot is because i find it annoying to kind of get product out even if i was to like put my finger i don't know it's just annoying i kind of have to scrape some product out or get a brush in there somehow i just find the packaging annoying i would have liked it maybe in a stick or something or a little bit of a bigger pot even it's just a little bit too small for me but that's my only complaint it definitely has a more matte finish this one is more of like a soft natural slight glow finish whereas this one definitely is more of like a true matte finish both are very airbrushing and smoothing on the skin both are very undetectable on the skin but if you don't like a matte product then you definitely are not gonna like this one but I really like both formulas I definitely like the liquid formula more it just looks a lot more healthy on the skin for me but this one is really good like I do not regret picking it up I love using it and I think maybe if you have oily skin as well this might be a better option for you
when you think of Nas, you think of Orgasm and you think of Laguna. Like, that's just what you think of. It is one of their tried, well, it is their tried and true kind of products, their shade ranges, and a lot of the stuff, if not all the stuff nearly, that, that they bring out is themed around those two shades or products. And so I picked up at Christmas time this half side of Laguna Powder Bronzer and this half side of the Orgasm Blush because I had actually never tried either of these particular products. I was always skeptical of the Orgasm Blush and the Laguna Bronzer because it is everywhere. It's constantly re-released and I was just kind of like, is it really that good? Like how good of a product is this? And I don't know why, I just didn't think it was. But when I got this and tried the bronzer, so we'll talk about the Laguna bronzer first. Wow, if this is not one of my top favorite bronzer formulas. Wow, wow, wow. This is incredible. Like I find this bronzer so smoothing, like non-patchy, easy to apply. Like you could apply this in the dark and it's still going to look absolutely beautiful on your skin. It's perfectly buildable. It's long wearing. And I just think it is one of the most incredible bronzers around. I really do. So now I get the hype. Now I understand why they keep re-releasing these because it really is that good. And I think that's one of the problems is like that catch 22 of like this product. It's like pillow talk from Charlotte Tilbury. It's like so amazing. They keep releasing all these products based Based off of it that it kind of gets this like skepticism around like is it actually good or you get like burnout from the actual like product itself and what gets lost is that this is actually an impeccable product truly I really want to get the new talc free ones I wonder how that formula differs but they're not out in Australia yet so once they do come out in Australia I will pick that up now let's talk about orgasm powder blush while we're here I never would have picked orgasm up if it wasn't just in this duo and I knew that I was going to do like a full face brand review kind of thing and I was like I can't do a NARS review without knowing what orgasm is like I never would have picked it up it's like this kind of shiny pink it's just not really my vibe and I think I had like a makeup video where I was like trying new makeup for the first time or something like that and I actually tried the orgasm blush in that video and I was like I better try it like I need to I was really nervous too I didn't think it was gonna look good on my skin and I fell head over heels in love with it I love this blush I get it I get the hype I really do it's again it's a beautiful blush it looks lovely on the skin it's very smoothing airbrushing I just I really really like it I have no complaints about it and it's it's a product again that I just never would have picked this up but I'm glad that I have it because I really love it and now I kind of get the hype around it and why the brand is so in, like vested, invested in like releasing so many orgasm products because it really is a beautiful impeccable blush formula and shade. I also got the little powder behave blush in my little Christmas set and this is more of a matte powder blush versus the orgasm which has a bit of a shimmer in it and this is also very very beautiful very airbrushing smoothing on the skin very long wearing I really really like the NARS blush powder formula the, the NARS powder blush formula I think is what I'm trying to spit out there it's definitely something that I'm more interested in dipping my toes in especially if I see other shades that I like kind of want to try like I think this blush formula is really underrated like I don't hear anyone talk about it at all and I think they need to aside from orgasm even because these blushes are really really stunning on the skin like right up there just equally matched with the Pat McGrath Labs blushes in my opinion. Next up is the NARS highlighter in Capri this is kind of like a pinky highlight and this is beautiful absolutely beautiful one of the most natural seamless non-texturizing powder highlights i own as soon as i tried it i fell head over heels in love with it it's this perfect mix of subtle but there you know how there is some highlighters that are just really like barely there ever like you can barely tell there's a glow and then there's like the really blingy ones where it's just like whoa she's got highlighter on this one is like the perfect in between while still being so, so natural. It almost looks like a cream on the skin and I have been mesmerized with this product. I, again, think that NARS highlighters are being incredibly overlooked because this formula is like A++. I, I adore it. I think it's insanely good. 
Let's move on to eyes now. Let's talk about the NARS Smudge Proof Eye Primer. I have the shade Light. I've actually gone through one of these before and this is my second one. And I actually really like this eye primer. I think it's a really good eye primer. I love that it has a tint to it so it kind of covers any discoloration on the lids. My only complaint is it's... I, I, okay, so my only complaint is my last one ended up getting too dry to the point where like it was making my eyeshadow really dry but and and also making it hard to blend out but I think I just pushed it way past its expiry because this one since it's new it's like the complete opposite it's really lovely and creamy it's not as hydrating and like creamy as the rare beauty eye primer so if you're looking for something a little bit more hydrating then you don't you don't want to pick this one up but if you have oily lids or you don't really mind then I think this is a really good option it definitely extends the wear time of your shadows and helps them blend out beautifully on the lids I I think it's awesome so the only mascara from NARS that I've tried I think they have the NARS Climax and then the NARS Climax Extreme if I'm correct in that and I've only tried the NARS Climax Extreme and I've had this is my second mini and then I've had the full size because the first time I got the mini of the NARS Climax extreme I loved it like fell head over heels in love with it and I was like I need the full size of this I bought the full size and the full size sucked and I don't know what the difference is but the mini was perfect I used that mini up like I was like scraping it and I had no issues with it and it looked incredible false lashes like volume amazing and it's the same with this mini too like this is the first time I've opened this today I've been saving it for this video and like I feel like my lashes look incredible they look like thicker, more volume, they're plump, they look like almost falsies, and this is awesome. But when I used the full size, it didn't give me as much like vavoom, but the biggest problem with it was as soon as it dried down, like within like five minutes of it drying down, it just started like crumbling or flaking all over my face. And I have never, ever, ever had that problem before ever with any other mascara so I don't know what the difference was between like the full size that I got and the mini but I really like the minis of this NARS Extreme but not the full size so I don't know. Eyeshadow palettes. I do only have not only but I do only have two eyeshadow palettes from NARS and they're both limited edition ones so the first one is the NARS Stargaze palette this was last year's holiday palette and I have a video using this palette on my channel so I'll link that down below if you want to see a video or look on it and this is a really nice palette I picked this up because you guys wanted to see it in action on my channel and I really like it the formula is really nice the metallics are nice I wouldn't say it's anything wowing like I don't think about this palette in my collection it kind of just sits there if I'm completely honest with you it's it's a nice color story and everything don't get me wrong the mattes are beautiful but like the metallics are the metallics are nice they're just not out of this world impressive I don't know it's just not this palette all in all is just nothing like mind-blowing to me but the quality is really solid like quite solid but then you have the NARS Climax palette right here and this is like one of my all-time favorite palettes I own I think this is just one of the best palettes around I really really do the quality is chef's kiss, although I will say mine's getting a little bit older now and this matte isn't performing as well. Like I, I really struggled blending this matte out in this look. Like it, it looks unblended here and don't mind that. I just, I just struggled, honestly. But these ones are really beautiful and the metallics in here are stunning. Like stunning. They're so gorgeous. And I know so many of you have found this palette like discounted somewhere and picked it up ever since I've like shown it on my channel and you've been loving it. I just think it's such an awesome, awesome little nine pan. I think NARS should honestly bring this nine pan out in their permanent collection. I think it would do really, really well. If this is the quality of all of NARS shadows, it gets a seal of approval from me because it's amazing. But I do know that their formula can switch up a little bit. I did want to pick up the most recent like NARS Orgasm palette. But honestly, I just have all those colors. So I was like, I can't justify this. If I see it go on like a good sale, I might pick it up. But right now I just couldn't justify it. So out of the palettes that I have, the Climax formula is like A+. The Stargaze formula is probably like an A-. minus, But I think they're really good solid quality palettes. I really do. 
lastly, we have lips. I have wanted to try these little, let me actually check what they're called, Afterglow Lip Balms. I've wanted to try these Afterglow Lip Balms for the longest time. And when I went to America last year, I picked up this little mini pack. And my gosh, did these not disappoint me? These are just nothing. Like, honestly, they're not even hydrating on the lips. I like, well, at least for me, it just kind of was like, okay, is 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 that it like I've kept them around because I wanted them for so long and I use them every now and then but like this is definitely something that I'm just like meh, meh. I think they've released like a nude range like a yeah a nude range of these which probably and are, are a little bit more pig pigmented which will probably be more up my alley but yeah this just this formula it's not even hydrating so I'm like mm, what's the point I picked up in the Boxing Day sales, I think it was, this Dolce Vita lip set. So it's like the lip gloss and the lip crayon. And I've raved about this so many times on my channel. I love this. I love the shades. This lip gloss is one of the best lip glosses I have in my collection, hands down. This formula is impeccable. It's hydrating. It's not sticky. It's like a lip oil in a lot of ways. It reminds me a lot of the Tower 28 lip jellies. It's so... It's like more pigment, it has a perfect level of pigmentation to it. It's actually hydrating as well at the same time. It's not sticky, it's not goopy, it doesn't feel like heavy on the lips or anything. It glides on and it just has this beautiful texture. It lasts a decent amount of time as much as the lip gloss is going to. And yeah, it's just really one of my top formulas that I have tried, period. And then this little NARS Dolce Vita lip crayon. I actually, when I was like 18, used to have a couple of these NARS lip crayons as well. I used to wear them all the time and I forgot how much I love this formula. For me, this is really an, a good, solid lip formula. And I can see myself purchasing other shades in this particular formula as well because I love the like little crayon type well I love the the shape of this the applicator and everything I just find it really really easy I like how these are like buildable but also can be sheared out I like the feel of them on the lips I love the longevity of them and I mean I love this shade in particular so I really think that these lip crayons are like some of NARS's best lip products personally at least out of the ones that I've tried because yeah they're just fuss free they're easy they're long wearing I love them. I also have this Rose Cliff Rouge lipstick, which is the one that I'm wearing on my lips now. And I think this is a beautiful nude. I think this formula is pretty decent. It's not a satin type formula. It's a little bit more matte than a satin type formula. So it's quite long wearing. Like I've been filming for quite some time now and it hasn't, I haven't reapplied my lip and it hasn't really budged or anything and I've been drinking, etc. So I think it's actually a really, really solid formula. It feels very lightweight and comfortable on the lips. I definitely have a little bit of butthole lips, you know what I mean? Just ever so slightly, and that's because it's that more matte formula. But it's ever so slight, and I'm happy to live with that. It doesn't taste bad or anything like that. It doesn't have any fragrance from what I can taste in it. And so, yeah, I really think that the NARS lipstick here is a solid one as well. I really do want to try a couple of more lip formulas from NARS. I want to try their, like, matte longer power matte lipsticks i want to try their air matte liquid lips and i want to try they brought out a new one oh it's like a hydrating lip i'll put a picture of it on the screen so they're kind of three lip products that i'll probably pick up eventually and if i do i will definitely give you my thoughts on those but that's my thoughts on the lip products that i have so far i think they're pr i think they're pretty solid i really do So that's actually all of the products that I have in my collection from NARS, that kind of full face. I don't have a lip liner. I just, I either didn't find one in stock or they just kind of didn't look impressive to me. So I was just like, I'm not going to waste the money. Same with brow products and eyeliners. I just have so many of those products in my collection right now. It's just no point. If there was one brand that I probably could only shop for from for the rest of my life, it might actually nearly be NARS. And I know that's controversial because there's like Pat and everything. But the thing that I really have appreciated about NARS is that it's just seems to be to me like good or high quality fuss free kind of makeup products just really consistent from product to product you're going to get this just consistent high quality formula at least from everything that I have tried and if something hasn't worked for me it's just purely like a preference type or like a skin type kind of clash not necessarily that the product itself is bad. So I am really, really blown away. I highly recommend checking out the brand if you haven't before, because 
there are so many absolute gems in this brand that really just do not get the love and attention that they truly deserve. I really mean that. Overall, NARS gets like a massive A plus from me as a brand. Like truly, I am in love. Let me know your thoughts on the brand. Have you tried a lot from NARS before or is it something like me where you've just kind of overlooked it and are you thinking of trying any of the products? Let me know. And are there products from the brand that I didn't include in this review that you're like, oh my gosh, you absolutely have to try this product. It is the best. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know from you guys. And other than that, I hope this video was helpful or fun in some way, shape or form. If you're watching till this point, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so, so much. Uh, if you'd like to, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. And I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye.